Hi, it's Mike Chen. De extinction, also called resurrection biology or species revivalism, is the process of trying to recreate an extinct species. This is basically what they did in Jurassic Park, and of course, what they created ate them all. However, efforts to de extinct animals do exist. And if scientists are correct, we could be really close to bringing back creatures that don't exist right now. Currently, researchers are using three approaches to de extinct animals. The first is called back breeding, which involves finding living species that have traits similar to the extinct animals. Scientists will then selectively breed these living descendants to make a version that closely resembles their extinct relatives. Examples of these are breeding cows to produce a creature like the extinct auroch. The second and perhaps the most popular method is cloning. Scientists will take a preserved cell from an extinct animal and extract its nucleus. They will then implant the said nucleus into an egg of the closest relative of the extinct species. The result would hopefully be a close variation of the extinct species. Unfortunately, cloning is only applicable to recently extinct species. This means the woolly mammoth and the passenger pigeon may never be cloned. The third method is genetic engineering. This is a relatively new field in the realm of genetics. Scientists will use the genome of an extinct animal and compare it with its closest living relative. Gene editing tools such as CRISPR will be used to swap relative genes from the extinct animals onto the living species. Unfortunately, this does not form a copy of the extinct animal, but rather a hybrid version. However, none of these methods can so far fully return extinct species back to the wild. This means we can only determine the most efficient method by answering the question, what is true the extinction? Regardless of these circumstances, scientists have big bets on animals that should be part of the de-extinction priority list. So here are the top 10 animals scientists wants to bring back from extinction. First, we have the saber-toothed tiger. The saber-toothed tiger is known for its long curved saber-shaped canine teeth. These teeth are so large they extend from their mouths even while they're closed. These deadly kitties can be found all around the world around 42 million years ago. Researchers have discovered that the saber-toothed tigers went extinct shortly after the ice age. However, paleontologists have yet to find out what caused their extinction. Probably because they refused to eat Manfred. The Labriotar pits of Los Angeles holds fossils of mammoth from the Pleistocene era. If substantial amounts of saber-toothed tiger fossils are found here, then there may be a chance to clone a close relative of the species. Number two, the moa. The moa is a huge flightless bird native in New Zealand. The country in fact has nine different species of the moa until they became extinct around 600 years ago. The reason for their extinction is still a point of contention. Some say the Polynesians in the 13th century hunted them to extinction. Others believe climate change, disease, or frequent volcanic eruptions have also caused their demise. Like in other de-extinction efforts, scientists are trying to find ancient DNA belonging to the moa that can be used to bring them back. Unfortunately, researchers have yet to find a well-preserved moa bone. Number three, mastodon. The mastodon is a species closely related to the elephants of today. They used to live in North and Central America. Unfortunately, they became extinct 12,000 years ago. Unlike mammoths, mastodons have shorter legs, longer bodies, and more heavily muscled. This makes them more similar to Asian elephants than their larger mammoth cousins. You may have heard of the mastodon through popular media, such as the Power Ranger franchise. You know, the Black Ranger rides a mastodon motif to fight evil aliens that are out to conquer the planet Earth. Unfortunately, this may be the only method of seeing an actual mastodon yet, as there are no full mastodon fossils uncovered so far. Number four, the dodo. The dodo is perhaps one of the most popular extinct species out there. These flightless birds once resided on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. Unfortunately, like the moa, they may have been wiped out by the Dutch settlers in the 17th century, where diseases brought by pigs and rats may have also contributed to their demise, and some say they were just so dumb they couldn't run away from predators. However, full efforts to de-extinct the dodo are still far from fruition, as scientists have only discovered one complete dodo skeleton to date. The next animal researchers are trying to bring back is the thylacine. The thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger or the Tasmanian wolf, were the largest carnivorous marsupial of modern times. Unfortunately, the last thylacine died in the year 1936 in Hobart Zoo. However, some have reported thylacine sightings throughout the years. Thylacines can reach about three to four feet in length, excluding its two foot tail. Large thylacines have a standing height of about three feet and can weigh more than 60 pounds. Researchers are hopeful to bring back the thylacine given they have only been extinct for about 80 years. This means there is a lot of preserved specimen to work with, including three complete specimens in the Melbourne Museum. Next up, the short-faced bear. 
Wow, that's some extinct body shaming right there. The short-faced bear was the largest bear species to ever exist on the planet. In fact, some fossils suggest that it can be more than six feet tall. The height of the largest bear species of the planet, which is the polar bear, is only four to five feet on average. The short-faced bear lived in North America about 800,000 years ago. They were believed to have gone extinct 11,000 years ago. However, some are convinced that some of them may still exist in Western Canada. Cloning the short-faced bear may not be a big problem, unlike other species on this list, researchers have already salvaged a lot of its DNA from frozen fossils. The best chance of cloning the short-faced bear is by implanting the egg on the spectacle bear native to South America. Unfortunately, the spectacle bear is one of the smallest bears on Earth with a height of only two to three feet. These proportions can be a problem for producing a, you know, a good, realistic version of the short-faced bear. I mean, it could just wake up one day and be like, yeah, I don't know what happened to me. Next up, the quagga. The quagga is a distant cousin of the plain zebra in South Africa. They are known for their limited pattern of primarily brown and white stripes found on the front part of their body. Their rear bodies do not have any stripes. They are known to be wild, but are more docile than usual zebra species. The last of the quagga existed in the 19th century. The quagga was at first speculated to be a distinct species, but it was determined that it is in fact a very distinct relative of the plain zebra. Fortunately, researchers have in fact been in analyzing quagga DNA from quagga scans as early as 1984. This discovery alongside evidence that quagga are distant zebra relatives may mean the quagga can be returned to the wild through crossbreeding. Next up, the Pyrenean ibex. This creature is also known as the mountain goat. It lived in the Spanish mountains until they became extinct in 2000. Like other entries in this video, constant hunting and gradual habitat destruction caused their demise. However, the Pyrenean ibex, where the bucardo is the first animal to have survived the extinction past birth. However, the first Ibex clone has died seven minutes after its birth due to genetic lung complications. Next up, Aurochs. Aurochs are hulking cattle that are approximately seven feet tall. Yup, that's crazy. And can weigh approximately 2,200 pounds. That's like two buffaloes. Their huge size makes them the stuff of legend, often appearing in popular fantasy media. However, the mythical Aurochs do not appear to be myths at all. Aurochs are in fact the distant ancestor of the cattle we know today. They used to live in Europe, Asia, and North America. Unfortunately, the last of the Aurochs died in 1627. However, efforts to bring back the Aurochs have been in play as early as 2009. European science teams are attempting to revive various versions of the Auroch through breeding. One project called Operation Taurus wants to bring back the Auroch via backbreeding. This program has selectively bred 300 calves with Auroch DNA, and researchers are hopeful this will eventually lead to a version closest to the Aurochs we know of today. Personally, I just think we're trying to bring it back because we want Auroch steak, or at least I do. And finally, the woolly mammoth. This is the last entry on this list, and perhaps the most popular. The woolly mammoth was lost in the last ice age thousands of years ago for reasons unknown. However, it was believed that the coexistence of giant animals such as the woolly mammoth and early humans have proven deadly to the former. Regardless, the woolly mammoth remains to be one of the symbolic representations of the ice age. Efforts to return the woolly mammoth have existed years back. Many researchers are working on reconstructing the mammoth genome for its potential replication. There was a project that wanted to clone the woolly mammoth using their closest relative, the Asian elephant. However, this does not mean we will produce a perfect recreation of the woolly mammoth. The best thing we can come up with is an elephant-woolly mammoth combo or a mammophant. Anyway, the woolly mammoth and the other animals on this list are just some of the many species researchers want to bring back into the wild. However, their return to Earth may come with a few caveats. Because we all know, sometimes they come back and they never come back the same. But one of these difficulties is to ensure that these returning species do not go extinct again. This means proper care and management of our ecosystem. Unfortunately, this can be tricky. Biodiversity has been on the steady decline in the past 35 years, which is no good news. The growth of human population and our consumption needs have contributed to the loss of species throughout the years. Problems such as habitat destruction and wildlife trade remain to be a threat to the conservation of the environment. This means there is also a need to solve these problems as well before fully committing to a proper de-extinction 
extinction effort. And of course, you guys might be asking, well, what about the dinosaurs? I guess Jurassic Park hasn't scared you enough. But if you are curious, DNA, genes, and cells are very crucial ingredients for even an attempt to de-extinct a certain species. Scientists can best attempt efforts of de-extinction to DNA that is less than a million years old. This means that dinosaurs are out of the question, unless you're one of those who believe that dinosaurs did not die off millions of years ago, but actually tens of thousands of years ago. And if you want to find out more about that, check out my video on the clues that dinosaurs and humans actually coexisted. But guys, let me know which extinct creature would you like to see come back to life and tell me why. My reason is for a big piece of steak. What's yours? Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later.